This week on War Stories from the Music Front, SEO and having people do stuff for free. Be very careful. Everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of War Stories from the Music Front. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and I'm joined by Lauren Weissman. How you doing today, Lauren? Michael, doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been a week since we last chatted, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a shirt. <laughs> it's all perception. It's all perception, people. Um, last week, we had a very cool discussion about band agreements, and um, this week... I want to kind of jump back into kind of a technical side of things because this is something that I I run into a fair amount. Um, it seems like every client that I deal with always has some website issues. It's just all bands have website issues. I don't know why. They just do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in the I built my first website back in 1995, so I've got a fair amount of website experience and um, you know there's this tricky thing called SEO search engine optimization and it's kind of like this secret sauce the secret formula that Google has created they're not going to quite tell you what it is but they leave you hints of what it is and and you know the the 30 second explanation is SEO is how you are displayed when somebody goes to Google or any search engine, but we'll just use Google, and types in something and the search results come back. And you're not paying for any search results. If you're not paying for search results, SEO is the natural search placement. Where do you turn up in a search result when somebody types in music marketing or San Francisco band or Beverly Hills bands or something like that? Um, it's very valuable to have great SEO placement. If you are on page one of Google, you will probably get a decent amount of traffic sent to your website. It's also how people who do know about you find you. So you've probably done this. I go out and I'll see a band and I like the band and I want to find out more about them. What's the first thing I do? I usually jump onto Google, type the band's name in and see what comes up to go find their website, their Facebook page, something about them. So that's how people will find you even when they're specifically looking for you. SEO is, is gold. You know, if you've got great SEO, you're in good, com good company in a good situation. If you've got bad SEO, your life can suck. So <laughs> um, I love using WordPress for websites. WordPress is a very SEO-friendly website backend platform. It's beautiful. It just almost naturally works for SEO. There's very little you have to do. If you set up a WordPress site the right way, you don't really have to do anything at that point moving forward. It just kind of works really nice. So I had a client who um, a few years ago, um, I built him a WordPress website. He had an old static website that, that funnily, funny enough, um, like the all of his pages were just gigantic graphics. There was no text uh. on them. It was just images. <laughs> and Google doesn't like images when it comes to SEO. You can't read the word that's in that Photoshop file. So I converted him to a WordPress site. And over the course of a couple years, we really built up his SEO to, to basically, if you had searched for this artist's name, he was everything on page one. And the, 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 the best compliment came when a fan of his for many years who has been running an uh, unofficial website on the artist sent me an email saying, Mike, I don't know what you did, but within about a year, you took away all of my SEO juice because this fan used to have all of the front page, page one SEO, and it's now going to the artist. I'm like, hey, that's the way it should be. You know, the artist should own all of their own SEO. And, uh, you know, things were good for him. Then all of a sudden, one day, he's like, I want some action and movement on my homepage. <laughs> and I found somebody who's going to do it for free. I'm Ooh. like, okay, that's, 
uh, you know, free, you kind of get what you pay for, but cool. But I, and I remember the last thing I told them was, remember to tell this developer, your website is currently built in WordPress and whatever themes and designs he does should just work on WordPress. Got it. I'll let him know. Uh -huh. <laughs> Four months later, his new website launches. The developer has never contacted me about access to the guy's WordPress backend, so I kind of knew what was going to end up happening here. <laughs> um, and he launches a new website, and it's in Flash. Oh, and I, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, oh, wow! Oh, you just overnight all of the pages, two years worth of pages, are gone. All that content is gone." You know, he had depths of content pages and everything. They were all gone. And now he's got like four pages in Flash. And I was just like, oh, this is going to hurt his SEO. I didn't, I knew eventually it would hurt it. I didn't realize how quickly it would hurt it. I got a call a week later. Him, <laughs> him, him saying, Mike, I can't find myself on Google. If I type my name in, I don't appear anymore. What happened? And I said, I hate to tell you, but, you know, here, and, and, and he was no longer a client, so I'm not, I'm being nice, but I'm not doing the work. I'm basically, you know, kind of here's what happened, blah, 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 blah. I hate to tell you, but I think your new web designer had no idea what was going on with SEO, and he destroyed your search ability. He's like, I got to get this fixed. I'm doing a private gig in three days. And I know there's going to be people there who want to reach out and contact me about further business. I'm like, you can't fix this in three days. You can't fix SEO overnight. You know, here's what you can go back and tell your designer to do. But, you know, I didn't tell them. But basically, it was like, you're SOL. You are shit out of luck. You know, it... <laughs> You can make all of these changes to fix everything, but Google doesn't immediately look at it and go, oh, all right, you flipped it back, and therefore we're going to immediately Yay. turn you to page one. <laughs> it's like, uh, no, you got to kind of work your way back again. So, so the war story here is there's a couple. You get what you pay for when you have somebody do something for free. I've seen, and I'm sure you've seen this too. I'll, I'll do a free press release. I'll do a free website for you. I'll record you for free. You know, um, that's all fine. And I can understand if you're limited in your budgets, but you may not get great quality at the end of the day if it's free. And, and second of all, in the case of your website, your website is your business card. And more specifically, Google finding your website is the doorbell to your house. When somebody sees you at a bar and says, I like this band and I'm going to go find out more about them, they're not, most people are not going to go talk to you after the show. They're going to leave all excited and they're going to go to Google and they're going to search for you. And if they can't find you, odds are they're done. They're done. You've got to really, really, really love a band to spend more time tracking them down and searching for them. So if you cannot be found on Google, um, you're basically non-existent. Doesn't matter how good you are. If you can't be found on Google, nobody's going to know you exist. And when you work with web designers, and especially when you transition websites from one platform to another, it's not as easy as just building a website and launching it and turning the other one off. There's a lot that has to be considered behind the scenes, and you should really talk to your new web designer and ask him questions about, well, how are you going to transition from my old website to my new site? How are you going to maintain all of my content? How are you going to maintain all of the links to all of my existing pages so they're not broken because they don't exist in a new website. Lots of the stuff that, again, a lot of bands are going to go, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about. And, and that's the whole point. If you don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you need to go find somebody to at least consult with. 
you know, you can call me, you can call Lauren, there's other people, and you can just say, listen, I don't need to hire you to build a website, but I'm having somebody do something. Can you give me 30 minutes of your time and tell me what I need to know and ask this guy to make sure I don't get myself screwed over here? So it's, 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 for me, it's sad to see that happen when bands do that because they spend years building up and creating something that's really good and working and then literally see them in a moment of a poor decision overnight destroy it all. It's, it's just, it's sad. It's every part. I mean, it's, it's every part of marketing. It's every part of branding. It's the people that just, they jump to try something too fast or they think, wow, I don't have enough money. I'll do it this way when it's going to end up costing you that much more. The, the aspects of SEO, I love, I love your doorbell concept. I'm, I'm going to steal that and use that. I, I think that's, that's excellent. It starts right there from the gig. Like Michael is saying, to be found, to be seen. Remember, people that are at your show, many of them are drinking. Many of them are with friends. Yep. Many of them are trying to make new friends. We'll put that nicely. Yes. And <laughs> as, they're, as they're there, are you allowing them to see, and this is for another episode, but is your banner clear? Is your name on the bass drum? Do people know what the name of the band is? And that's something to take into consideration because not only is it getting the band name and getting that SEO for your band name, but for that person that was too drunk or got somebody's phone number, or was whisked out in the middle of it, or kicked out, or, or whatnot. What do you sound like? And when they search on you, if they can't remember your name, are they still going to find you? Can, can they spell I, your name? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, growing, exactly. up, growing, growing up in the <laughs> 80s, hair metal, all these bands that wanted to put Zs and Xs in their name. I mean, you couldn't spell their name based on the way it was pronounced. You've got to think about that. I mean... This could turn into a whole nother war story, but I've always told people, it's like, in this day and age, when you're thinking of your band name, before you select it, take your ideas and hit on Google and see what comes up when you type in that name. I mean, exactly. I, here, and here, even here, the misspellings. Here's, 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 a real, here's a real funny one. I'm going to use their name. Um, there was a band that I actually loved, and the band was called Kids, K-I-D-S. And um, they did a sh they, they did a showcase, and I kind of was was giving them some feedback, and I said, "Listen, from a marketing standpoint, you got to change your name. <laughs> You've got to change your name. I mean, kids, it, I, I get it; it's a cool little name, but here's why: go to Google and type in kids. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe it's a band, so you're going to type in kids music instead." <laughs> yeah, that's not going to narrow it down any further. You know, you're going to get all kinds of lullabies and purple dinosaur songs. And, you know, you, you know, that name, if, if you select it, I guess here's what it comes down to. If you select that name, you have to understand the battle you will forever face. You will never be found in a Google search because that name is too generic and the and it, and it applies to too much broad stuff that no one's ever going to find you. So you've got to think about that type of stuff when you're selecting your names. Exactly. I mean, my, my name, when I was selecting, I mean, laurenwiseman.com was available. There is another Lauren Wiseman. He's apparently a, uh, a digital web designer and porn director. I found out about that from a, me a messed up email. But, you know, I, and I, I spent a lot of my career as a ghost drummer behind the scenes. But even for the things that I'm credited for, I have more credits as a drummer for misspellings of my name. So when, when the web thing started happening and I crossed over and had a drumming and a producer site, I bought 11 different domain names just to secure L-A-U-R-E-N, L-O-R-I-N, all of these different, all these different names to secure the way my name is actually spelled. And, and that, that direct marketing, you know, I, I, can't, I, I can't stand by you enough with that, Michael, of these people that are, well, we're calling ourselves, uh, what was it? There was, a, there was a new band out of, I forget what, they, they call themselves Target Place. I'm like, Target, target place? place? Target Place. They're like, no, no, what you don't understand is it's placement of the target and it's, I'm like, dude, 
<laughs> I, 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 get, I get that you've got this vision <laughs> and I get what you're trying to say, but that getting it doesn't come across in Google. In Google, you just type a word in and Google gives you matches. Exactly. And, and you've got, you know, I, I hate to tell bands that in this day and age, it's not just, you know, in this day and age, if KISS was coming together and said, we're going to call ourselves KISS today, that would be a terrible name. It's too basic. It's too generic. You'll never get found. You know, in 1973, that wasn't an issue. You didn't have that concern. The world has changed. You've got to consider this type of stuff. You've got to consider the, the absolute importance of Google SEO and how you can be found and and more importantly, as the war story illustrates, how not to destroy what you've created. Understanding your links, I, I you you summarize it so well. The things that worked in the past. Well, this band did it this way. This person named it that way. That's not happening. That was 1973. I'm not sure how old you are, Michael. I wasn't born yet. I was born in 74. I I, I see these people say, well, this happened this way. Even these bands, even these bands, you can see a number of these interviews where they say, we never could have made it in 2012 and 2013. Thinking about SEO, it doesn't need to define you. It isn't, your online presence is not you, but you are the online presence to reach the widest array of people to capture them to come into you. And every time you set a roadblock or shorten the budget or don't take considerations to keyword, to SEO, to SMO, social media optimization, to thinking about even going further, the content that you're putting up to be found, then you are hiding in the woods, in the dark with millions of other bands. So just like Michael says, and I'm, I'm, I'm right there and I, I, I preach it just as loud, your SEO is the doorbell, and Google is the doorbell for people to find you. Do not assume they are going to spend 30 minutes trying to find you. They're going to spend 30 seconds and give up. Yeah. You've got to make yourself that visible, both on stage, off stage, and online to be successful in music today. Yep. And, and make sure that the people you work with, your team that supports you, understands this. I'm not, I'm not advocating going out and hiring a search engine optimization expert. You don't need to go to that extreme. But you do need to have people who at least understand the basics of it. If you understand the basics of SEO, you're good. You, you'll, you'll get taken care of. Things will work out over time. You don't need to hire somebody for $1,000 a month who's going to do keyword tracking and keyword searches and focus on. You don't need all of that. You don't. Maybe Target does and, and Apple does when, when, when they've got their huge budgets and their huge campaigns. You don't need that. Just make sure that the people around you understand what is important about SEO, how websites work. Um, you know, in this day and age, anybody can, can learn how to build a website in, you know, a month or two by taking an adult continuing education course. Doesn't and WordPress can help you. WordPress can help you. I didn't mean to interrupt there, no. Michael, but that, that concept of I have, I don't know how many of you have WordPress sites. I have WordPress SEO Yoast on the bottom of every page. I am not a designer like Michael. I do not know HTML. I've never built a website, but I've hired people to build websites for me for clients to make it that much easier. I know where I know what to do with a keyword. I know how many words to put on a page. I'm not a pro at this, but I had those basic things put in place so that I don't screw any of it up. So it's like Michael's saying, it's not, you don't need to be a master of this. You just have to have that foundation. So every piece of content and every action you take online is compounding the uniformity to bring up your SEO to get you seen that much more. Exactly. Don't don't put yourself in the situation like this this past client of mine, where all of a sudden in one week you completely disappear. That's panic. I could hear the panic in his voice. <laughs> I could understand what that panic would feel like if all of a sudden I disappeared online. It's it's scary. Don't don't put yourself into that position. So I think we've got another war story under our belt. We're going to disappear now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Good luck trying to find us online. Uh, all right, so again, 
You can find us on Spreaker.com. You can find us on YouTube. I'm going to roll the dice and say you can find us on iTunes now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my big goal is eventually to get us on iHeartRadio. That cool. would be very cool if we could get on iHeartRadio. And you can also find us when you search Michael Branville. Look at how he comes up. Look at his SEO. You can search Lauren Wiseman, too. The, these are the things that you're going to want to be able to search with your name, your band name, your album titles, and the things surrounding you. Yep. So just as you can go out and find us, make sure you're findable, too. Yep, exactly. And leave us any comments, suggestions, questions. We love to hear from you guys. So until next week, take care, everyone. <laughs>